All right, Saturday morning. Boom. So I never did show you guys this yesterday. Just never ran a ran a good sunlight for it. But I went and washed the truck, right? Well, look at all that down the side. And it's kind of hard to see, but you can see all those up and down streaks and stuff. Kind of showing up really good there on the viewfinder. But uh, yeah. I think I'm going to have to take it to the car wash and uh, give it a good scrub down. Anyhow, you can tell by the exhaust that it's a windy day. That's why I'm still on the porch. Because the wind is one of those where it just kind of dicks over everything. You can even see over the neighbor's house here. See? It's not bad. Anyhow, welcome to today. I guess by now too that the bus is actually pretty well charged and everything, but just uh, yeah, no time to do it. I didn't feel like doing it at uh, eight in the morning, pissing off the neighbor. Um, I don't know if I get to do it tonight either because I'm supposed to be going swimming or something tonight. I think I might have to wait until Sunday. This is the third week in April and it is snowing like this outside. Hopefully it shows up because the viewfinder is not really showing me very much. But uh, I'll put it this way. I can't see the power plant over there and the focus is kind of freaking out because it's all snow. Ugh. Merry Christmas. I thought I'd take advantage of this uh, slightly slow time here at work to show you some stuff. This is the remote I got, same as my last one. The left stick is not spring loaded, but left right is. And two positions for these. Um, I like this because you know you just set it here and that's your cruise control. Yeah, you just gonna remember where my middle is. I might eventually get a gate because I am actually using the three speeds, so I might do that. Uh, here's the receiver for it. That's upside down. Yep, six channels. So battery and six. Pretty awesome. Servos that came for it. Well, uh, 151.38s. Looked them up. They're decent amount of torque and uh, power. So that'll be my steering and shifting servos. Uh, this guy, Turnigy wrench kind of neat as the bottom here opens up. Oh, if I didn't put it on super tight. Let's try the other hand. There, that worked. Okay, well. Whole bunch of ends like this. Put this on the end. There we go. Screwdriver with nice knurling on there. There's a couple of ridges of knurls here. You can really get her in there and get her done. 
kind of neat that all the bits that go on the end here. There's actually um, slots there. It is just uh, smaller and bigger Phillips and smaller and bigger flathead because that's all they really come as. So I was like, oh, that'll that'll do me. And it's all threaded here. Like it looks like something I could have made in uh, machine class back in high school. Would have been really nice to make actually. So anyhow, I dug up my old parts for that, which is for these. And there's the parts bag with all the other goodies and stuff. There's the the balls and the, the cups and stuff like that in there. And but uh, these came in. So I should open one of these and take a look at it. This is uh, as raw as it gets. It still has some of the plastic flashing stuff. Oh come on! I used to get a couple Ziploc bags out of this. There we go. Nice, clean, and clear. So you gotta take that out. And it's just perfectly clean in there. Like I can just about see my reflection in that. It's that clean. So see one half. Then the other half, uh, this will have more flashy stuff stuck to it. I'm not sure why they do it that way, but yeah. So you know you have to trim that off, and then there's the place for the screw heads to sit in. That side has the for the nut heads to sit in. So this is parts tree B, one and two. So basically, I'm going to put these together today, and all the nuts and screws and stuff for the cover and that. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Oh, there's even a plug or something for. Hmm, I'm not sure what that's for. But I do have the high lift parts or manual on my laptop, so I can just look it up that way. You can get them right off of Tamiya's site, all the all the trucks and stuff. I uh, probably won't tear into this today because I am not doing the the ends. Like I'm not doing this part here because I still have aluminum um, knuckles coming from Stella Models. So I'm just doing this part today, and uh, that's about it just showing off radio and stuff too and unfortunately too this bugger does take the whole, ooh, eight double A batteries and uh, there's where you plug in a trainer for it and I think that actually is for the USB port for it too I have a cable somewhere for it from the old one I have no clue where the heck it is <laughs> I have to dig for it but that was such a delay on the first one because that cord was back ordered and they wouldn't ship it out until the cord showed up. Oh, and uh, more fun too is I'm going to have to pull all these bearings out and stuff like that too because uh, I'm going to reuse those if they're in good shape. If not, I have to borrow some from the bag I got from Stella. Hey, well, my hands are getting dirty and everything. I pulled apart that first axle there and um, I have to replace these outside bearings. It looks like they're spinning, but they're just spinning on the shaft. They're full of sand and grit. These are from the pinion. Um, I think both, yeah. It looks good, but it's full of grit and sand and everything. Uh, that's the pin out of the, um, oh, the uh, pumpkin. And, uh, okay, so I got the pumpkin over here. I'm going to take this apart next, but, um, when I pulled it out of there, there's a lot of black gunk come out. This uh, pinion shaft has got some chunks out of her. She still rolls freely though. It doesn't bind or catch, so must have been sand in the housing there. Because this is the housing. And yeah, not looking too good. So, um, I'm using electrical contact cleaner to clean the metal parts I'm not touching plastic with it so uh, the outside bearings I'm going to replace still got some from Stella I'm going to have to order more I think wait for the boat ride over here again so uh, I don't know I'll stick that in the hole for now but I'll probably buy some new ones 
Uh, still gotta tear this thing apart, so I'm gonna find out how bad this one is before I order any parts. And there's bushings in here. There's cups in here. But there is no clips. Or what the heck was that other part? Or these pinion pinions. So um tear that bugger open and see how bad that is in there. I hope I don't need a new one of those because I might as well just bought brand new axles. Well, I guess nothing to worry about in here. I just took the top off and looked at that. Nice and clean and uh, they roll perfect. They probably never been unlocked. Uh, well, I guess they have. They've been around like that, but you know, all the grease on there. But I'm going to put them back locked anyhow, so it does look good in there though, nice and clean, there's no dirt and debris, so that's good to know. Okay, now this has to be coming through on the viewfinder, well, like a video this time. That's how much it's friggin' snowing out here, the ground is turning white. Alright, well just sitting here, you know, watching the, watching the snow come down. Watching some pug one there while he's getting some, some scrap metals. And put my axles together. I ended up having to put one, two, three new bearings in there. I put two new bearings in here. Even though it's slightly dicked, it still rolls. And uh, where's the dicked part? There it is. Where it's got the black, you know, there it's all silver against the back, and then there's a few black ones. Well, it ain't touching anything, it ain't grabbing, and so it's behaving. So now I got this all rebearinged up. Like some of these, when you go to just crank them around, just a grimy sound coming out of them things. Like, feels like I'm using sand as friggin' uh, bearing paste. All right, watch more plug ones and working on this thing again here. Now I got her about right. Look at that first shot. Got her in there. Not liking that. Crap. Gonna have to find some parts. Alright, so I've moved on to the vlogging life and uh, I got this going. Got her in there, she's all working now, it's not binding or anything. I uh, put the plug in, didn't put the cap on because I don't want it that way. But anyhow, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no, eight. There was only seven screws and nuts in the bag. Son of a Anyhow, I got that one done, so now the one with the wheels on it over there, I'm going to take that one apart. And uh, I did manage to get the E-clip off of that and back onto there. They are a little bit more worn, so they actually pop out very easy. I didn't snug these things down because I still got to put the aluminum knuckles in there and put the halves in there. And I'm not sure if these are supposed to be matching up. I imagine probably not because then if it got to a part where... It, um, they're both the same, you know, going through a turn or something, it would catch and pull on there, and I don't even know how good that half is, it looks a little cocked, but, yeah, so I just put everything in the back of the bag for now, because, you know, then you know where everything is, put a little bit of grease on there, inside there, so that, uh, there's no binding, no binding. Well, look at this, I'm not even into this axle yet. And look at that, that's ball bearings. Some ball bearings in there. That one just came completely apart. There's the uh, other half of it, another ball bearing. There's the inside sleeve. Yep, I'd say that that is done. Done like butter. So, um, one bearing down, but. These are all bearings that I have pulled out. There's what, one, two, three, four, five of them. And they still roll good and everything. No hesitation or sandiness in them. So I am getting some parts out, but um, some parts are just right and done for. So uh, not even seconds later, I'm looking at this uh, one here and look at that. She is just right grooved out inside. Whoops, too hard. Yeah, she's dickered. She's done for. I got aluminum ones coming. 
You're going in the garbage. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Okay, so the second axle's apart. My hands are getting more greasy and junk and stuff. I don't know. Let's clean them off as good as I could. This axle, I gotta pull apart the outside bearing, the shot in this one. Inside's good. Those are good. Those are good. Even these ones were good. So this was the better axle. Uh, I just stuck, stuck that into the bottom of there and gave them a twist inside. The spider gears, like you seen in the last uh, differential, they are in good shape. They run smooth. So I still got these pile of bearings, which are still good. So I'm going to take one of those and put it on here and not have to use the new ones. Because, you know, why bother right now? Um, I'm going to take this stuff over to the sink and clean it with that electrical contact cleaner stuff. <laughs> you can see where it was sitting on the table. i got to clean that off. Got that e-clip off and went ka-ping, 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 ping landed behind the printer over there somewhere. I just managed to find her. It was hard, but, well, yucky, yucky. I'm going to be cleaning these counters off tonight and my camera and my hands. And, uh, this is what I've been using to get the e-clips off. I, I really got to suck it up and go buy some clips. And, uh, hey, it even sees me in the reflection there. Hey, guys. Uh, watching uh, Bill's team match playing some farm sims Saturday. Uh, hard as heck to tell because uh, it's so dark there. You see, like, you see my reflection because everything's black in there. So anyhow, uh, go over there and get some more of this uh, electrical contact cleaner and get some cleaned up. This is uh, one other thing I was going to show you guys. And I kind of forgot until I just got over there. Uh, these are the cups that were in that other axle. Or was it? No, this axle. Uh, this is the. Got it. This is the legit one here from High Lift, and this is out of I don't know what. You can see the difference, uh, but the distance from the pin to the cup is relatively the same. Just a larger cup and a larger shaft at the end. And that is why it worked. But uh, why it does it? Because it catches there. So, yeah. And looking at her, she might even be bent a little bit. I've already had to throw away a few bent uh, screws and stuff like that. Uh, like guys like this, and they're bent. So um, that's of no good to me. Okay, well I got this half together. And uh, this is going to be the better half again, I think. Just seamless. Once again, I got them offset, so you know that one, the one on the right's back and forth, and this one's up and down. Yeah, still watching Bill's T's Max. Starting to get to be daylight out there. The uh, snow stopped out here, but it turned the ground white, and still can't see the plant. So still, still snow in the air somewhere. You can see a little bit of it going by, but nothing like she was. But you know, I'm gonna. Grease this bugger up here. The pinion was also in a lot better shape too, but I'm gonna grease her up and put her together and see what happens there. Okay, so I think this is the final update for axles today. So I did put this one on the front there, uh, put the cover on there, and it uses four of these hex headed uh, screws, which is this Allen key there, which um, you don't put the rubber plug in here when you put this on, like this. This little rubber plug that I put in the other axle, yeah, you just don't put it in there. And then, because uh, if you take this off, anyhow, it's the same key to unlock the axles, and you're only really taking that off to lock the axles. I need to kind of trim it up and stuff, but um, I also got a phone call from City Guy. He says, with all this snow we're getting out here, I don't know if it's showing up, but uh, I got to close up the main pile. So I was looking here, looking for um, you know e-ring mover and stuff like that, and um, saw that picture there. I'm just working on the high lift uh, transmission here, and I see that there's a um, couple e clips holding this one coming off. Well, look what was in the bag that I seen that was in that picture up there, right up there, and apparently that's for e clips. 
whether or not it's for taking them off or not, I'm not sure, but looks like it might. Crap, that was in the bag the whole time and I didn't know it. It was in the uh, tool parts bag. Hmm. Well, I'll see what happens here. Uh, buddy Joe on RC Truck and Construction here is showing um, his uh, mega mega transmission. I don't know how well it's showing up. So you got the uh, semi fronts and everything like that. So the motor goes out the front like normal. Which means you can put a planetary there. And then you use the rear off the high lift with all its gears. And that gets you the tool, the transfer case out of there. But with a semi thing and the regular semi mounts. He just has to have uh, good size standoffs put on to get the transfer case up high enough to make it in line with the the axles here. So I think there's right where it hooks on the one and there's where it hooks on the other instead of this being way too low and dragging everything. So um, I'm going to dick around with this and pull it apart and see if I can uh, put the other sides on or something like that and with the regular front plate. See what happens. So now that that noisy printer started up <laughs> Well, I'm spending the last few hours here and I made the three speed transmission for the semi. Been uh, watching a little bit of Toby Games. Yeah, he's okay in moderation, but uh, some of his stuff's starting to get old and repetitive, like Happy Wheels. Just gonna die. Uh, somebody messaged me on Facebook or something. But anyhow, that's all I got left to do is put that cup on the front of that shaft. You know, just like how the. Um, high lift one is actually because I had it halfway apart looks like I'll put another bearing in the back of this I don't think it, oh J4 that's, a, that's one of these uh, nylon guys it would be this one up here actually that would be J4 it's a spacer that's what it is this nylon stuff in this nylon tree as soon as you go to move one of the pieces they just fall right out very hard and brittle and uh, so like these gears were there by themselves they weren't on a tree but all these in here the lighter colored ones and up in there and that they were all on their own thing I did crack open the thread lock for doing the screws there you can probably see them on that I uh, hope that wasn't a waste of thread lock but um, I just gotta put this together. I just finished greasing it all up. Doesn't look like much grease on there, but there's a lot. I um, made sure to grease up a lot inside there. I gotta turn the gears a little bit, I guess. And you can see you got, uh, that must be third speed because it just spins around like crazy. Then you let off and it's only half the speed. Then if I push that in, see she's barely turning. Hard to do one handed, but you know. You get the point. So I just gotta finish that up. I'm probably gonna put the ball cup on there because I had to open the bag to get parts out of it. So I might as well do it for this now and then I'll be all ready. The only thing I'll have to do is put the motor and stuff on for whatever I use for that. Uh, not using the 27 turn <laughs> and uh, two more of these eclipse from hell kind of thing and then see normally you know you put the two halves in put all the screws and stuff well, I'll put all the screws and stuff there so it's there and then you're supposed to bolt it down into the frames but mine's not going to quite exactly do that so uh, could be fun okay she's done um, a little bit of trouble getting in the first gear but other than that, it's going okay. Uh, it's probably going to be used anyhow for my, um, my Aeromax once I ever get that going. I'll have to take the case off again to put a motor on, but uh, when the time comes, mm, shiny. Just watching uh, Hypnotoad and Blade play uh, SimCity 4 or 5. And I finished with the thread lock and a bunch of other stuff. And it's uh, dead as can be out here. Uh, bumping into the box, the globe liner box. I had to bring that in, go through it, and find uh, pieces and stuff like that out of it. So, 
Oh, I actually have a customer. Okay, I figured I'd do this before uh, putting everything away for the day. The uh, difference between the high lift and the semi transmission. Well, first off, you can tell it's a real beast compared to this little guy. Um, believe it or not, uh, this is slightly longer than than this. Bad lighting here, but um, yeah, see, it is just slightly longer. Well, size of the metal longer. She sits a lot higher, a lot more square because it has those under supports and stuff. This one doesn't. Uh, the high lift has mounts here and mounts here that goes inside the frame. This has mounts here and here that sit on top of the frame. So they, like, they're both sitting frame level. That's what they would sit like side by side. So uh, this one comes out a lot lower in than that one. So that one comes out about the same as that, but yeah, doesn't quite match up back and forth kind of thing. And then of course the high lift, they compact everything putting the motor back here, and the semi, it sticks out the front here as far as it needs to kind of thing, but it's nowhere near as far as this does. So yeah, it's, you know, each got the pros and cons, but they look so much the same you know it's kind of scary a little bit there but so this one's full ball bearing uh, this one's full bushing <laughs> yeah they're all very good shape like I had this apart today I was gonna try to take the uh, back plate out of this with the transfer case and put it into here but the shift linkages are different obviously they are on the opposite sides so that threw that out of the water and the relativity between here and there on them and the shafts are different. And yeah, just um, a whole lot of nope. Nope. So um, yeah, that's that's gonna be it. I'm just gonna make some standoffs or something and have it set up higher over off the frame than uh, before, if I need to. Still waiting for the frame in the mail, so hopefully when that shows up, I can start judging whether or not I gotta make some pl uh, plate for this thing to sit on, or if I can just bolt her in. We'll see what happens. Okay, it's uh, six o'clock. I don't think there's any radio on, but quick in case it is. Yeah, Sirius was on. Oh, well, it's the end of the day. Um, hasn't been anybody out here for like two hours now. <laughs> I guess an hour and a half. But uh, the snow stopped and everything like that, so uh, that's a lot better. I gotta do up the gate here, and then I gotta go do some driving around and head home and see what happens tonight. Okay, as you can see, train going across that crossing. Well, it goes that way all the way around. And as you can see in the mirrors. And, uh, ooh, shaky guy. So that's right behind me here. And that is the train engine actually coming around. That's pulling the train cars that are ahead of me right there. It's a horseshoe, they call it. There's the train in the layout. Yeah. 
Yep. So now I am trapped here until this is finished. Go along the far siding there and come back around and well, end of the train is coming up here now. I think that's the last car up there. Yep, looks like it. Yeah, that's the tracks there that goes past Buddy Troy's place, so uh, it's not very busy, but there is the odd train. Yeah!